Welcome to day two closing by the rain. How do you like the seating arrangements? Better? Okay, you like it. So, before we actually start, I do have to mention something because I forgot it at the work life balance workshop and I don't want uh, the delegates to go outside without a workshop. But first, mood check. How is it? Oh, that's good, that's good. This morning a lot of people were tired. Okay, so for uh, the delegates and also for everyone else actually, if you have not attended the Work-Life Balance Workshop but you wanted to attend, it was practical and simple tricks. I know the, the video explains that it's so amazing and everything, but what's amazing about it that those delegates tried to convey is that it's just simple, practical tips that you use every day. If you want to know what those simple, practical tips are, you can go to whynot3.com, which is my website. You can there subscribe and you get a small ebook that describes the top 10 mistakes that people make in balancing their work and life. You get a daily creed that I use and read every day in my morning routine that has helped me so much and I share it with you. And you get me personally on your email, sharing personal stories and all that stuff. So why not 3.com and you can subscribe there. There you get the outline of the workshop so you can just reread it and go to all the links that I've mentioned in conversations probably or in the workshop. Everybody get it? Yeah. Awesome. The next thing is you might have noticed there and I'm sorry that it dropped. But it says, sometimes an idea can become a reality. <laughs> so it's a large flip chart, as you can see. And the idea is that, we, I was talking with everyone, and they have so many ideas. It'd be awesome if you just went there and wrote them down. Afterwards, people can see, maybe get inspired by your ideas. Or maybe the OC can check it afterwards and get inspired themselves when cleaning. <laughs> so... <laughs> That was a bad joke, but okay, let's move on. <laughs> so now we are finally day two, plenary four. The topic is entrepreneur in Isaac. We've covered the mindsets. We now are super motivated. We know the why of Isaac. Uh, it seems daunting, but we know we want it. There's something interesting about it. We know now also how to spot ideas and to go after them, not letting them go. And then we go to branding. So this morning I just explained that if you want to be the best, you have to do your research. And today you had all your sessions. And how were they? How were the fuzzies? How were the fuzzies? Okay, I'm assuming they were good. So now we are in testimonial sales and marketing. I've talked to many of you, I've uh, asked for feedback and you've graciously given it to me so I was very happy with that and I've, I've had an entire plan for today uh, that goes very much into the entrepreneurship side of it, how we do exchange and, and all of this stuff that sounds very fancy to some of you. But I realized that not many of my personal stories, here and there I share them of course, but I try to accentuate the exchanges part because I want you to go out and inspire other people. But most of the questions that I get from you, sometimes similar, is share your personal experience or stuff like that. So right now, what I've tried to do is create a space where I am next to you pretty much. I'm close to everyone, so it's not in rows. And I would like to ask someone here in the audience to in the beginning, set some expectations. So I'll ask four people, three or four people, to ask me what they want to know. There's a space right now where you can ask me anything. So if you don't want to ask me anything, we'll just sit here and reflect and I can put some music on. But this is the space. Who wants to ask me something? There, there. Okay. 
It's easier. Uh, good evening to everybody. And of course, the related events as well. You have seen so many failures, you have failed, you have dropped on, and here you are. So what can you guide me on? Thanks. Thank you. Deep question from the beginning, good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> Failure. I used to I used to do sales coaching. Uh, I, I worked for UNICEF and Oxfam, where I had uh, guys that I, I took on and I coached them. I used to I used to make a bet with my uh, manager, where I said I can take anyone and make them into a good sales guy. And, and the one thing, the first thing I told them is. Um, I, I don't care if you get sales. I care how many failures you've got. Because the difference between me and you is how many failures I have under my belt. Um, I did. I went into door to door because it was the most intense. And um, I think the story before it is better. So I was very shy, like most people now. Nowadays, it's apparently a very common thing that a lot of people are shy. Maybe it's because of our society. Um, I don't. I don't really care. I just know that people can become better. I truly believe that if you just focus on your skills and just go and do it, you'll become better at one point, and you'll become this new person. So, I uh, I was very shy. I I didn't have parents to back me up. So I was, I just had. I was in university, and I was in university. I skipped uh, one year. So I was in university at 17 years old, right? So people, um, I, I didn't really have rights, and suddenly I didn't have any parents as well. Uh, because of familial issues, we didn't have any contact anymore. And I was uh, sitting there and, and thinking, okay, I don't have any social skills, where do I go now? Um, I didn't have any backup, so it was pretty much live under a bridge or, or just go and do stuff. Um, I didn't know how to become social, and many people, and it's the reason why I love ISEC, I, I didn't discover it back then, only years later when it got better. Uh, and ISEC gives you this opportunity, first of all. It makes you social. I see people come in, and, and a year later, it's, it's crazy. It's so fast how it goes. They're like speaking in public and like, hey, how are you doing? Hey, have you been, did you do this roll call and stuff like that? So I like, I like ISEC, but I didn't have ISEC at the time. So what I did is, uh, I don't share this story with a lot of people, but I used to go outside and approach people on, on the streets. Uh, this is before Salem. This is before I was anything. I was just a 17-year-old kid. And uh, I, I just went and I approached because I read somewhere in a book, oh yeah, you just go out and you, you just talk to people and, and you start with asking them the time and and you go and you build from there a conversation and so on and so on. And um, I remember um, I was scared to ask the time to a stranger because I was standing there and there's like a stranger passing, right? And I'm like, okay, okay, just a second. And then I go, oh, no, they passed. Okay, next one, next one. And it, this would happen like days in, days out. And I just had this conviction. I don't want to end up under a bridge. I don't know why I was thinking ending up under a bridge. Obviously, you don't end up under a bridge. But in my mind, it was, if I don't learn this skill, I will end up under a bridge. Nobody will support me. Nobody will love me. So uh, one day, it, it's happening, it's happening, and, and we have, in the residence I lived in, we have a piano room. And uh, always when I came back from this whole journey, I would go through, like it's like a garage thing, and you have the piano room, and then I would go up to my room. And um, suddenly I used to play piano, and, and I hadn't done it for years. And suddenly I just wanted to go play piano, right? And I can tell you, I failed so much that at the end, when I was actually social, I could play the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven <laughs> fully. Um, a full release, completely, like not the ones that get learned, and uh, many other songs. I, I used to love scores. So 
it was really brutal. And piano at that time was something that chilled me down because it was full of adrenaline coming back. It was like, oh, and, and just played piano and just calmed me down. So I think you just have to find something to, to calm you down. But then I got into sales and, and all of it, and uh, recently my mentor told me this. Uh, the larger you grow, the more it stinks. Um, I will say something big, which maybe you guys can relate to, but um, at the time it was just approaching a, a stranger, right? Like asking for the time. At this point, I'm, I'm asking for sales that are maybe 5,000 to 15,000 euros. And let's assume you have this meeting, everything's going super well, super well, super well. You think, oh my god, this is the next big thing, like 10,000 euros is going to come in my pocket, it's going to be so awesome. And then it falls through in the last moment. And oh my god, do I sulk then. It's like night that I sit. It, for me, I, I've descended it down to three days now. So three days where I just, I'm like, ah. Oh, Jesus, why? And I'm like super negative, I, I don't know why. So my mentor told me, it doesn't get better. It really doesn't. Um, the, the larger you grow, the larger your failures are gonna be. The only thing you can control, however, is how long this time period is. So you can train this time period of how long. So my mentor does it now in 40 minutes, he says. So this is where I'm growing towards, right? Three days to 40 minutes. It takes a while, it, it doesn't get better, but what does get better is, and this is what I taught the salespeople, is you don't really get immutant, but you get the good ones you remember. You don't remember, you don't really remember your failures. I don't remember the failures I had a year ago. I remember the ones that I, when I started my journey, obviously, but I don't remember the ones, uh, like, I, I remember I was a year ago at Bell's, the conference you saw in the video, uh, but I, I remember I lost the sale or something like that. It was a 3,000 euro sale where I, at the time, it was a huge sum for me. And I thought, oh my God, this is the end of the world. Like, and I'm in this conference wasting my time. Uh, and I came back and I made an even bigger sale. So, um, and, and what you remember is not that failure. You remember the success that follows further. And, and then what happened with me, and this is the reason why I can endure, um, in the opening plenary I was a bit nervous, right? And then at one point it clicked cake. And, and when I do sales, the same thing. When I do business, the same thing. What is this click? It's experience. At one point a click came that you guys are just a home group, but a little bit bigger. And I've sat in front of many home groups with many people. And always the feedback was good, and always the people liked me somehow, even though I was like, oh my God, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. I just put my heart and soul into the content and assumed that it would be enough. And, and usually it was. And this click came that you guys are just my home group. I have a bigger room, obviously, so the posters have to be bigger. But it's the same. And this click came, and, and I'm less nervous now. So I'm focusing on the successes. When I do sales, the same thing, right? I go door to door, and, and I think, um, at the time, I, I, this is like not to hype everything up, but I, I broke the national sales record when I was like going uh, for, for the sales stuff. And every time I go door to door now, or every time I'm failing in my business, I'm thinking, oh my God, where's the next sale gonna be? What am I gonna eat next, next month? Um, I just, think, okay, you broke the national sales record, don't be such a pussy, like, let's go on. And I say it gives you this experience, right? It gives you this experience to fail in comfort, um, where I can tell you in business, the first thing you'll think is, oh my God, I failed. Where's my next month's food gonna be? How am I gonna pay my rent? So I say it gives you the safe space. And this is the reason why I love it, right? So I think that might answer your question. Okay, thank you. Right. Someone else? <laughs> yes, they give out candy. Thanks for reminding me. Um, so my question would be that you shared a lot of um, entrepreneurial stuff. Um, tips how to, I don't know, be successful sort of. But could you share more personal um, 
sort of stories or things that have shaped you in the past and that are not necessarily related to business? To what? To Isaac related? I don't know, whatever life you have to um, I can share the fifth I had with girls. They're embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I used to fall in love super fast. It's really bad. Uh, so I now have like a system to control myself to not fall in love. Uh, it's because I'm, I'm super, you might have noticed I'm super systematic and everything. So I know my weaknesses. And my weakness obviously in relationships is falling in love super fast. So how do I stop this? I have this, it's called in sales, it's called qualification, so I used it on relationships. But it was to protect myself, not, not, not uh, the girls. And I would say, okay, look, like if we go serious, like at least, like we need, for instance, like when I sleep, right, I like when it's warm. So if the girl likes it when it's cold, I'm like, yeah, no, this is not going to work. <laughs> I'm not that strict actually because my girlfriend does like when it's cold and it irritates me. <laughs> but I, I love her, so it's fine. Um, loving doesn't mean that you always have to like this person, right? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, well, a person that you're in a relationship with can irritate you sometimes, but you know that at the end of the day, everything will be fine. Because it like, you don't always like that she has all her makeup on your sink. Like, but you take it with you, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not the perfect example, of course. It's not the perfect example. I try to be the best that I can be as I try to be the best that I can be in here. Uh, because, again, I said this in the work that Bounce Workshop, she's my focus and I try to do my best. Because I truly believe that when we started talking, uh, that she is someone that I can spend my time with, and if she's someone I can spend my time with, then she's worth investing my time in. Uh, so it doesn't matter, if it, we actually don't have fights, which I love, but we have discussions, and I don't care, because I know at the end of the day it's all fine. Um, but uh, yeah, I used to, this is how I fixed it, right? But the, the stories I can tell is like how for weeks on end, which all of us have, right? On weeks on end, it's like, oh my god, I'm never gonna find the right person, I'm never gonna do this, I'm never gonna do that. Or I was dating someone that I shouldn't be dating. Um, yeah, I guess it relates to business as well. When I got into business, everything I learned in relationships just transferred there. There are clients you just don't want to work with. It's, they're soaking up all of your energy. Uh, and, and I had to learn the bad way where um, they were paying me barely anything. Like they were just, like I had like maybe 100 euros left from the project and in Belgium the minimum wage is 800 euros. So I couldn't even buy anything from that. But they were giving me consistent projects. So I was like, okay, well I'll stay in this relationship, right? Because uh, they're giving me consistent projects and it was a large university. And, and it was a good name to have. I didn't want to mess it up. I was scared. Oh my God, what are they going to say about me? But then when I got them, it was exactly what I learned in relationships, right? Sometimes it's just better to not be in it. I can tell you, like, the sales that started making the moment my time got liberated, it just trumped everything that I'd done there. But again, it's confidence. I had to go through the experience to, to really realize which clients uh, I had to say no to. Learning a skill of saying no to people is just, yeah, so valuable. I, I don't know if this is something that answers the question or... <laughs> it's you said not Isaac uh, and tried to be not business, but you know, for a while. Um, I know which area I can cover other. Yeah, so this moment where I thought if I don't go out, I will, uh, I will end up under the under the bridge. Yes, good. You're paying attention. <laughs> so th this is one of the key moments I remember because this is this gives me this mentality of like 
oh, like, of course, I'll just do it, right? Uh, I did it before. This is one of the key moments. The other key moments was where I learned how to invest money in myself which was, I was reading a lot of books, I was reading uh, a lot of uh, like those YouTube speeches and blogs and stuff like that, and on social interactions, on sales, all that stuff. And I hit a, a certain point where I, I believed that I couldn't grow any longer. Like, you think, oh my god, I'm at the top of my game? Like, I'm the man. And you're in a, in a how do you say it, a location? where you are the man, but it's not good to be in that location. Uh, a quote of a friend of mine is, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And I, I truly live by it. So I, I decided to invest my time to go to New York. My mentor at the time, who I was following through books and YouTube speeches, was in New York. Now you have to realize this was, I just started my sales career, so I had barely any money in my bag. Barely. But I decided this was the time. I needed to go to New York to grow. This person, this specific person, this mentor that I'd chosen, he would fix pretty much all the issues and doubts that I had. And um, I was doing this sales stuff, and I was thinking, OK, let me pay the deposit, which was a ginormous amount at the time for me, because it's just I didn't have that money. I paid the deposit, assuming in three months I will find the money somewhere. And this is, this is one of the biggest mindsets I created since then. Money will come as long as I have a goal, which is sometimes very scary to think, but it just happens. I don't know how. You set out a goal and money will come, no matter what you're doing. And I, I keep hearing experiences from people with the same thing. Oh yeah, I'm in a poor country, but I still got to go to China uh, because I saved a little bit of money. What I did is I went to sales. This is the story how I broke the sales record, actually. So I paid the deposit, and now three months that I have to, to actually go and do stuff, right? And uh, I was working three times a week while studying law. And I was growing slowly but steadily my, my sales. Um, every, every day it was growing and growing and growing. And at one point it hit. So the average of the company is three, but my average at that point, two months before I went to New York, was six already. So I was very proud of myself. And then at one point I started hitting threes. Now threes for, uh, for the company's average. But for me, I was suddenly, I thought I was losing it. Oh no, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to pay this? I have to pay this in like a month. What's going to happen? Um, I'm averaging three. This is not enough. And I, I kind of chilled, relaxed, came back, just started reflecting, which is what you learned in essence, right? How to reflect. Start reflecting what is going wrong, what is going wrong. And it, it was just this mindset of fear that was holding me back. And, and I kind of, I don't know what I exactly did, but I got through it by, by just forcing myself to do it. And then again, it started going up. It started going even more up. And the closer I got to the date, the, the more my sales went up. And at one point, it was like, um, I think it was in July. It was, a, no, probably in September. It was a cold day. And uh, we were in, in the Brussels region, where it's like Dutch and French, but most of the people were French. And thank God I learned French <laughs> through my studies. So that day I sold nine, which was the record of, uh, of that local company. Actually, I think it was the national company. Even. So I broke the, yeah, it was the national. I broke the national sales record there, and I made enough money, and I gladly, gladly, I didn't even care, because I hit my goal, and I had even more money than I thought. Took that money. Paid it to my mentor, went to New York, had an amazing time, and had, I prepped like hundreds, hundreds of questions. <laughs> and I asked all of it to him. And uh, he answered everything. I came back from that and like, look where I am with these companies. Uh, I have several companies now. Uh, these, these idea generations where I interact with people. It's, it's all because I took the time to go pay this person and he 
took his time to interact with me. So suddenly, I saw myself for the first time as a valid investment. My time and my money, if I invest in myself, is going to be worth it. And, and I'm going to close with, my, my mentor always said that for every dollar you invest in yourself, you're going to get $10 back. And I see these conferences as an investment. For, for every euro you invest in yourself, you're going to get a 10 times back. And you're going to see it throughout your journey. You're going to get it back. So the answer, okay, you have to remember the scene. My cross says, I didn't have a choice. I had to tell Jessica, uh, who is the boss of Harvey. And Harvey uh, turned back and he says to Mike, I don't care if you have a choice. Loyalty means you come to me first, no matter what. You come to me, you explain it to me. And this just, just sticks in my mind. Whenever friends didn't do this, I just got so frustrated that I didn't know why. And then in this scene, suddenly I realized that my core value was loyalty. Everything I do in my company, loyalty is number one. My clients know that I'm loyal to them. If they tell me that I can't work with another client, I don't care. I'm loyal. So I will stay with this client. However, if at one point they are taking energy from me, it's a bad relationship, I cut it off and I move on. Because honesty, if you are suffering through something and you're not being honest, it's not cool. So I don't know if that answers your question. I think we have uh, time for one more question because I want you to go back to your accountability buddies. And yes. Yeah, awesome. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have some common questions. Uh, have you been in Tomorrowland? What was the uh, experience? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, so. I was in Tomorrowland 2013. I hate festivals, I have to say this already. So I hate festivals, never been to festivals, and when they offered me, it was a day before. So imagine you're sitting there studying for exams, and I get a text message, it's not a joke. I get a text message on my phone, and my friend says, do you want to be crew at Tomorrowland in two days? And I'm just staring there, and it's like, of course it's your friend, so you think it's a joke, right? I'm like, are you joking? It's like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I can go for three days, but I'll go for one day, which I don't know if it was a good decision or not, but at the time it worked, so there was no decision to make. So I took a one-day pass, went to Tomorrowland, thinking, oh, this is going to be shit, but, you know, I get backstage passes, so at least that. <laughs> I went there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, you saw the intro. Um, it's just the best music ever and it's just 150,000 people exactly listening like this like and and there is like Dimitri Vegas and like Mike right in front of you and everybody's just listening and then you have these epic moments where the DJs because they know arc of suspense right that's how you build up the whole suspense thing in their music, like they build up the beats per minute so that like your heart starts beating and just at one point it just explodes and everybody's there and cheering and there's like lights and oh god it was one of the best experiences ever. I take it with me wherever I go and I hope I, hope I kind of brought it in some little way to this plenary when I did the intro. Almost fell off of my skateboard but okay. It was worth it. <laughs> So, yeah, it was amazing. I would definitely recommend doing it. I do have to say it was very hot. Uh, and we, as a backstage, got free water. So that's how I could tolerate with, with everything. But it was just, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to close it here? Or do you want one more question, maybe? Yes, we have, uh, well, first of all, your vice presidents and team leaders will carry you through experiences if you hold on and stay loyal to the end. Um, so that is one. 
But in, in ISEC we have conferences and they're called leadership development conferences, uh, seminars. So you will have them here in Lithuania as well. I highly recommend you to go. And the facilitators take you through a little bit deeper journey than what you're experiencing here. And I, I, I can't explain how some of them change lives. It's one of the best experiences we as members can receive. Um, there are two people here. One of them is MC and one of them is agenda manager who were with me in Euro LDS. That was one of the biggest conferences at the time. And it ruined me for everything. It was, you had a chair who actually coached me for this. Um, he was amazing. His stories were great. Uh, you had facilitators that were so epic and sharing so many personal stories. And uh, yeah, those LDSs really impact you. They, they make you aware of who you are as a person, of your core values. That's what I said with, uh, when it was asked me. The reason I know all of that is because I went to those conferences. I had amazing facilitators who carried me through the experiences and it's not Tomorrowland, but it's close. It's just, sometimes people crying is very common there uh, if you have a really good conference. So yeah, definitely go abroad, go in Lithuania to all these conferences. I wouldn't skip a single one, I didn't. I also went international a lot. It's the reason I skipped from member to a higher position right away. So, yeah, I think that answers. Take every opportunity. OC is also a very hectic uh, thing that you're doing. Uh, it's, it's one of the best experiences you'll have, and you'll appreciate the OC so much more. Uh, because I remember when I was OC, I was OC for a national conference. And um, so I barely slept, obviously. And then on Sunday, I came back. I had a lot of work, I had homework to do. <laughs> I, I went for a nap at 7 o'clock in the, in the evening. I woke up the next day, it was like 12 or 2 o'clock, I don't remember, but I just slept through everything uh, and it was the next day. And I wake up and I literally thought I took a nap, but there was sun outside. So OC is a very intense experience and you love every second of it. So yeah, grab opportunities in ISEC because they're very intense and you'll experience a lot. That, that's like a commercial, but get it. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Now, I want you guys to, to move on to the next thing. You can approach me afterwards asking more questions. Um, do you feel like most things were answered for you? Is something still unresolved? Can you lift your hands if you feel like this was okay? You like this? Okay, then I want to move on to something that you can do now with your accountability buddies because now I've shared, I talked a lot. The idea is that you do this as well. That's the whole idea of this conference, that you connect with others. It's not the point that I stand here and talk about my stories. I've already done them. It's time to, for you to create your stories. Um, I had a really cool video that uh, it's not relevant now. However, I will, I will say this, uh, which is our focus in ISEC is exchange. Remember that. You will only experience how impactful it is when you've realized that first exchange. When you got that member, when you've received that member or when you sent this member and he sends you an email, saying, oh my God, you've changed my life. Thank you so much for making everything smooth. And you're the person responsible for it. I'm gonna skip the next video. It's not, it's not in the context of this plenary. Um, and now we're gonna switch to accountability buddies. Go back to your accountability buddies. Sit somewhere in the plenary and take some space. So everybody's in accountability buddies now. Okay, so first question I have. These buddies were your guardian angels. Have you taken care of them today? Raise your hand if you did. 
Ooh, I see a lot of people not raising their hands. I challenge you tomorrow to live up to your word and actually take care of them. Bring them a glass of water, maybe a banana, give them some energy, give them a hug, give them a high five, and so on. Can everybody agree with this? Okay, then we're going to move on. But before I move on, I want to share a story so everybody pay attention to this. So what we're going to do is a vision board. Who knows what a vision board is? Some of the new members? Yes. Okay, so I'll explain it one more time for the ones that don't know. So the idea of a vision board is actually, uh, it's kind of like that mindset that I had where I just invest money and assume that it's going to come back somehow. The idea of a vision board is you take a couple pictures or drawings or something that you write down on a piece of paper and you stamp a date on it and the idea is that you, those are your goals, right? This is your perfect life. Like at the time when you're writing this, this is outside of your reach. It's not completely outside your reach, but you can't really imagine yourself living it. That's what a vision board is. So I want you to to, to do that for what you want to achieve in ISEC. Maybe, and this is not a joke, maybe you want to chair, and this is your vision. Put it on your vision board, and put, put something like six months in. Who knows, maybe it'll work, maybe not. Maybe you'll just get to be a facilitator, but at least your dreams were so big that when you got to be a facilitator, it worked. Or maybe your vision is to do something with the MC and you're still a member. All these stuff. To illustrate this, I want to share my vision board, which I found back in my, in my files, uh, which was recent. And I'll share you also the pictures that happened six months later. So this is my original vision board. It's nothing too fancy. I did it on a program and just Google stuff. So as you see, first is like, um, it's called the Bulletproof Diet, where I just wanted to be more involved with um, my diet and focus on eating less cookies, but at least having the energy to carry on and doing this kind of stuff. So I'm doing it more regularly now, I noticed. The second one is an infinity pool somewhere in the super cool places. You know, like you sit in this place and you think, oh my god, I've made it. So that was on my vision board. And then another one is like a huge conference where you think, oh my god, I am so cool. Uh, you have to realize when I made this, this was totally outside of my reach, right? Um, I'm not going to go into all of it. Most importantly here was uh, getting focused because I couldn't focus at all. And why not, why not 3 gave me that focus after, afterwards, which I already told most of you about. Um, and that was right there. That was an idea of what I wanted my girlfriend to be like. I'm not going to show you my girlfriend, but... This, is, this was kind of my vision board, right? This is a picture of me filming TEDx in November. It was four months after my vision board. That's another picture of me filming TEDx with the camera you're seeing here and there. This is a picture of me on a project, a film project in Tenerife, where they invited me for two weeks to film uh, their after movie and documentary. And Yes, okay, now let's skip that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this, these are real pictures that happened five to six months after that vision board where I thought, nah, man, this is crazy, it's not going to happen. So these vision boards, I've done them now, I've done three in total, and usually I reach my goal six months in. And it's crazy, my last one, it had public speaking. The crowd was smaller than this, and at the time, I'd reached it faster than I thought. At this point, public speaking is not the goal, but um, yeah, I'm still living it and still doing it. Uh, so these vision boards, to me, they work if you believe in them. So these are examples of vision boards, and now I would like to invite you to take 10 minutes and then just make a vision board of yourself. And if you're already shared with your accountability buddies, because then you're accountable to it and they know what to track you on. Everybody understand the exercise? Okay, let's go. Intense, intense for me as well, so I hope it was intense for you. I would like to invite you now to 
Show some courage and share. Who wants to go first? You can share about the exercise, you can share about the entire day. I can see you, don't worry. <laughs> Here it is. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, guys, okay, so, take it seriously. Uh, this is my fourth conference. And you know what? I got something to share this time. <laughs> 